Welcome back to Northwest Elite Spirit. I'm Coach Brian, and today we are diving into a fascinating encounter between Don Juan and Carlos from the book Journey to Itzlan by Carlos Castaneda. And we're going to shed some light on some powerful life philosophy. So grab your popcorn and let's unravel some of these powerful secrets on becoming truly inaccessible or accessible at will. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, do that now. Of course, if you like these videos, hit the like button. If you have um, comments on your own personal experiences with these lessons or similar lessons, uh, comment below. If you don't have words to express, go ahead and add an emoji. Every little bit helps towards the algorithm in, in getting these uh, lessons out there and sharing these ideas with the world. Um, thank you. So this one's going to be called Mastering Inaccessibility, Secrets of Don Juan's Wisdom. And from the very beginning, um, Don Juan is expressing his the power of his wisdom through lessons where he's teaching Carlos to catch quail. And Carlos, again, is spellbound. Like, he goes all day long totally fixed on what he's learning, and he misses a meal. And um, Don Juan shows, like, his ability to read other people. And he says that... Um, it's, it's not often that you miss a meal. So like going towards Carlos's physical and mental state. Don Juan is very observant. It seems like when people are thinking things, he can, he can read that. And I think it's a body language thing or like the faces we make and the tones we make. Not necessarily like some psychic ability. But if you're observant of people, you can see when their eyes squint. You can see when they frown. You can see... Um, when they're like, um, like an idea pings in their mind and it's the same with their entire body. Like our bodies, our eyes, our faces, our tone of voice all give us away far more than uh, we know. And I think Don is very keen on that. So, um, and then the, the power of simplicity in this one, Don Juan during that day, teaches Carlos how to build a simple trap. And in this trap, they capture five quail, and which ends up being more than they need. And um, again, this goes towards the power of simplicity. Uh, it's a simple trap that gain, garners the two of them far more than they need. And this also goes towards, um, I would say, not only Carlos, but all of us, where we have this, this want to make, we want to make ourselves seem smarter and our ways seem more powerful than the next guy. Even as, so even as Don Juan is demonstrating the power of simplicity, Carlos is still throughout this interaction finding ways to argue or downplay um, the, the intellect. Uh, or the powerful effect of um, Don Juan's ways. And um, so after they capture these quail, uh, Don Juan says, um, we only need two, so we're going to let three go. And he, um, he cooks them. Very, very, again, he very simply cooks them. And Carlos makes a comment that um, if he had had it his way, that he would have cooked all five quail, and he goes in, and it would have tasted better, and he goes into how he would have prepared them, which is to dig a hole, um, take parts of some other plants, and line the hole with those plants, and roast them, and it would have tasted better than Don Juan's. And Don Juan says, no doubt, but if you would have done things that way, 
um, we might not have left the area. Carlos asks, how is that? And Don Juan says that everything around them, the plants, the animals, everything would have worked against them to, um, to keep them from leaving. And so Carlos is wondering, how is that? But I can understand how that is. And it stems from the idea of lack of disrespect. So you're tearing up plants when you don't need to. You're digging holes when you don't need to. You're out in the wild with this ego. And you don't, if you don't respect the wild area that you're around, you don't pay as close attention to things as you need to. So you would be tripping on the plants. Um, I've been out in the woods with people who don't have respect. And they're tripping around, they're fumbling around. Um, they, every little animal, you know, he says, even the quail would have worked against them. So like a little squirrel makes a noise and they're, uh, they're skittish about and panicky about every little noise they hear. And when you panic, you don't think right. And think, not thinking right causes calamity, causes you to trip on things you're not looking at, like plants and rocks and things like this. And you also become exhausted when you're out in the woods totally freaking out over every little thing and tripping and not able to walk correctly, maybe you injure yourself. Um, you exhaust yourself and that's how I think everything around you will work against you if you don't have respect for the world around you. So as, as Don Juan's talking to Carlos about these things, um, and he says, um, what right do you have, Don Juan says to Carlos, what right do you have to say that the world is in this way? And Carlos answers back, there's no proof that it isn't the way I say it is, basically. And again, this is something that you, we run into with ourselves and others. No matter how many times Don Juan has disproven um, uh, major beliefs in Carlos's life and minor beliefs, Carlos says that there's no proof that the world isn't the way that he says it is. Um, and that's, a, that's something we all deal with with ourselves and others. Even myself, like I, I've had the inclination that the world is the way that I say it is, and it isn't always the way that I say it is. So harnessing the wind, um, Don Juan, so they're, they go up on this hill, and Don Juan, um, he starts looking, and he says, um, don't worry, to Carlos, I'll, I'm your friend and I'll take care of you. I'll make sure you're not hurt. And Carlos starts getting panicking. He's like wondering what about. And Carlos or Don Juan, he's he's just looking and he's looking and he notices like something, and it's like maybe uh, a like a the wind ruffles something, and he's like, there it is, there it is. And so um, he, he does have a keen observation of the movement of the wind. And so to Car Carlos, again, he's playing it off. You know, he's, he's, he's acting like he doesn't know what is going on. But we all know the, the, the power of the elements. Maybe, maybe he hasn't quite caught on yet, right? But Don Juan is steering him towards understanding the power of the elements when you're out in the in the wild in my opinion and so he has Carlos he starts to gather eight sticks and he has Carlos do the same and they put the sticks on top of themselves and they are shielded from the wind and um, once the wind dies down they come out and Don Juan's looking around again and they kind of go over the same cycle where they're looking and they're looking and Carlos is demanding to be told what he should see. And this is a style of teaching I don't approve of. And you know, you, you get clients and you get students who they say, well, that's how I learn. I learn by being told what to do. And it's just not true. We all learn through experiencing the thing. 
And if people can just, uh, just do what your teacher tells you to do, and that's how you're going to learn why you should do it. I could tell, or what you're going to experience. People want to know, what am I going to experience if I do this? What are the benefits? Why should I do this? You're going to find out through the doing. You may find out a little bit by doing it once. You'll find out a little bit more by doing it again. And eventually, once you well practice in it, you'll, you'll know exactly why you do it. And this is Don Juan's teaching style. He has Carlos do the thing, and then Carlos hopefully, though he's very uh, hard-headed about these things, learns why he does it. So the sticks are on top of him to guard him from the wind. And once the sticks are on top of him, he realizes, I'm guarded from the wind. And again, he's that, you might call it a Western student, who always argumentative. And even though he now knows why he should do a thing, he's like not willing to admit that he now knows why he should do a thing. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and um, like, Don Juan is also teaching him the importance of adaptability. So the wind wasn't there, so you didn't have to be covered. Now the wind has come, and so you covered yourself with a simple, quick technique that is easy to do. Um, so again, another thing that is just that simple. So Don, Car Carlos is struggling to see what Don Juan perceives. Um, and this mirrors how we ourselves overlook subtle factors in our lives, um, potentially inviting unforeseen challenges. But it isn't just that we overlook them. Well, overlook might be the word, because sometimes we intentionally, intentionally overlook things. Or, like I like to say that ignorance, ha the key sounds in there is ignore. So we see it but we ignore it. So Carlos is, during this interaction, he's really pushing the fact that there's nothing out of the ordinary going on. There's nothing unusual going on. And those are true, those things are true, but there are things going on that he hasn't noticed. So the, there, there's things going on that ordinarily happen, and there are things going on that he may have never noticed before that are always going on. And Don Juan is directing him towards being able to see those things. And Carlos's argumentative and egotistic nature is preventing that. He's really fighting it. Even up to the point where he does see something that, has, that he hasn't ordinarily seen. Again, not something out of the ordinary as far as what happens in the world. It's just something he hasn't noticed before. And since he hasn't noticed it before, he can't, I, I think, like many of us, he can't stand that he hasn't been perceptive enough to see this before. And so he acts like it doesn't exist. And again, asks Don Juan what he's supposed to be seeing. And Don Juan at one point does say, you know, it's like a whirl or a twirl or even a face in the wind. And, the wind rises and falls or goes uh, back and forth. He, I, but he says, I don't know. You, you'll you see it. You'll know when you see it, basically. Um, and then, uh, again, when Carlos sees it, he acts like he doesn't know. And then also, so when they, when they, they go up to the top of the hill, because this is Don Juan's lesson. He wants to show him the wind and the, and the, the stick um, technique. And so as they're up there, when they put the sticks on top of themselves, they're still like in the wind, but the wind isn't touching them. And so it's a lesson about hiding in plain sight uh, or being inaccessible while still in the middle of things. So even though the wind is there, it's not touching them. And even though they are there, so even though the wind and they are there, the wind isn't touching them. They are inaccessible to the wind. Um, and, and the subtlety of it, like it wasn't some, some ex grand extravagant um, act to just gather some sticks and put them on top of themselves and then laying quiet and not moving. Um, 
So Don Juan instructs Carlos to be still and be quiet. Carlos can't do it, but he instructs him to that. And this goes towards like in life. If you're laying low, not necessarily hiding, but just being unaffected by the things going on around you, um, you don't have to speak or move and attract attention to yourself. And um, Don Juan says he guarantees that this technique even were even if a like a bear or a mountain lion or something were to come up to them and put their nose up to them, th they wouldn't bother them, and that's how inaccessible they are at that moment. So Don Juan is um, able to read the wind, and and again he's um, he he's giving examples of. He's reading the underlying currents going on around him and teaching Carlos how a hunter can blend in with the, um, with the area around him and remain unnoticed <clears throat> and how powerful that is for, for facing life's challenges. Like you can be in the midst of it all, go unnoticed and still gather the things you need in life and do, not to do, overdo it because when you overdo it that's when you start um, gathering unwanted attention and that's when you start becoming egotistical and damaging things unneededly and so the ego trap Carlos's ego it resurfaces when calling a, recalling a lost relationship so the wind and the sticks metaphor isn't working as far as how Don Juan's trying to get this point across of becoming accessible and inaccessible at will as a hunter or a person going out in the world and getting the things you need. And so it goes to a relationship. He brings up an old relationship. What about the blonde girl that you used to like? And Carlos becomes very morose and like sad. And he says, why do you always do this to me, Don Juan? You always make me so sad. Don Juan basically calls him out on that, says you're playing games, being manipulative. Like I said before in some older videos, Carlos only has like these um, emotions as a means of manipulation. So when he's sad, he's sad to manipulate the situation. When he's angry, he's angry to manipulate the situation. The, 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 to me, the emotions really aren't ever real with Carlos. So far, I haven't read all the books. <clears throat> uh, and um, so the ego trap, when people have egos and their egos are challenged or threatened or when they want to cling to something, uh, they get desperate. And they, like again, they cling, right? Or they run away or they become frightened or something if their ego is challenged and so they act desperately. Or you know, like I said, when you're when you're in the woods and you hear a sound and you get frightened, you 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 run and you act desperately and you trip and you fall, and you exhaust the people around you too. When you're out in the woods with somebody who's disrespectful of the forest or the animals, or and or um, easily frightened, and again, it's always the people who have the biggest egos, in my opinion. It's always the people who have the biggest egos outside of the forest. Who, who who can't handle being in the forest. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange thing. So mastering inaccessibility. Um, Don Juan's insights into being inaccessible revolve around gently interacting with the world without leaving a mark. It's about tapping lightly and learning to move forward. So like I have had the personal struggle of when I love somebody, I, my, my kids call me aggressively supportive. I'm aggressively supportive. I'm only recently after, you know, my oldest kid is 25, 23, 16, 7. Um, I'm just now re realizing that I don't have to be so aggressive. And I can gently be supportive. And that allows the people around me to be more of themselves rather than trying to fit into where I'm um, directing them, I guess. And even 
So if somebody is not allowed to be themselves, I'm saying, in my opinion, that I am damaging them. So this is who they are, but I have these ideas of what I think they should be. And if I force my way, then I am actually damaging them. And that's not a good thing. And it's the same thing even with my ideas. If I force my ideas and don't allow them to come to fruition like organically or naturally, I damage them and they become something else. Like e these videos are an example of that. If I began trying to force things into the algorithm or force things into the way I think people will want to consume these things, rather than me having this idea and just letting the idea come out and even take shape as the video progresses, maybe within 15 minutes, a 15 minute video, I'll, I'll be talking about something and an idea will sprout from that and it's okay and I think more powerful me, for me to express that. Even if it comes out clunky, in the next video that, that idea will have grown even more and I'll be able to share it more precisely and it will be more powerful. So once again, I'm Coach Brian with Northwest Elite Spirit. This has been, I worked with a couple titles, so I, I don't have this one uh, mastered. This is Mastering Inaccessibility, The Secrets of Don Juan's Wisdom. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, do that now. Like, comment, share, and of course, practice. Thank you.